welcome to another up close video. Today's one is for Tonic Showcase number 32, which is the Perfect Pergola Hexagon box. I haven't done a showcase up close video in a while because um, I hadn't been sent the, the die sets to be able to do them for you. Um, so hopefully you'll enjoy this one. I'm not going to do a construction video though. It is kind of a bit of an in-depth sort of construction to create this pergola box. Um, but you do get the instructions in with the die set and Tonic keep doing um, construction videos now as well. So you should be able to follow along with um, Alison, Karen, Leo or Jody um, on the Tonic YouTube channel when they do their construction videos. Um, I just feel like it's a little bit redundant if, you know, two people have done a construction video. You might as well see something a little bit different. So my tutorial video, uh, which will be up tomorrow... Um, is using some of these beautiful decorative dies in this set to create three different cards using um, double-sided adhesive sheets, gilding flakes and glitter plus the die cuts um, just as another kind of different sort of idea that you might not have tried before or you might have done ages ago and forgotten about um, and it will kind of refresh your mind of how to do it. So um, let's have an up-close look at all of the dies in this set. Quite a lot of them are to create the actual gift box, which I can show you here. So this is what the Perfect Pergola box looks like. It has two drawers in its base, but if you wanted to, you can multiply this. You can easily make another two or three of them, however many you want. Um, and these are little rectangular drawers that go in the base of the Pergola. And then you also have this hexagonal stack of drawers with three drawers in there that are the full hexagon size um, inside it. So there's actually space around here. So you can, um, if you want to, I'd cut the detail into my light blue pieces and backed them with a colour but you can put vellum or acetate there and put some fairy lights around the inside as well um, to give a beautiful different look or you can have um, these more as windows you can use one of the rectangles to cut these out back it with acetate to keep it um, integrity of like the construction of this outside piece and then you can have decorative panels on the inside um, hexagon as well so you'd be able to see through the front onto the inside panels too so there's lots of different ways of kind of like decorating this but I decided to go for I wanted to go for more of a masculine kind of look because I know Tonic give you all of these beautiful decorative panels but sometimes you either just don't want to do that much die cutting um, and you feel like you have to do that much to make the box um, or you just want it to look a little bit more plain and not quite so fancy so what I decided to do was pick out five different colours of cardstock and use those to accent different areas so you can see here I went with um, the aqua, I think it's called aqua, colour to do the levels between the drawers and those top and bottom pieces and then I pulled that in down into the little knobs on the small drawers and also onto a decorative piece on the top. I've done the light blue for the majority of the outside areas but I've also got a little bit of that, um, oh no it's called ocean actually, um, a little bit of the ocean round here and also round here and then I've also done these outside drawers with a darker kind of teal and I've used some of those panels round here as well so all of that all coordinates and then the inside of the this is actually done with the navy blue card so to match that I've done the little navy blue on here and then these drawers and the top piece that I've added on are all done with the true blue colour so it's just a nice mixture of all sorts of different blue and turquoisey tones to create an actual project here and I kind of think that this almost looks like something out of like a computer game I think this could look like some kind of magic portal or something that you get to at the end of a computer game so it could be good for teenagers and stuff or if you were really clever I feel like this central section the way this is in there you could somehow make it so it turned and you could make it look like um, Albus Dumbledore's entry to his office you know with like the phoenix um, I'm sure the staircase like spirals in that um, you could have something like that you could do some kind of like turning mechanism maybe using some of the spindles from like the rotating memoir or the typewriter or something like that I'm sure there's some other pieces from different tonic die sets that you could use to create something like that and you could have some kind of like staircase going around this maybe you've got um, a phoenix die cut that you could use or you know all sorts of different things and to make this one look like something out of like a computer game I've done this giant like gemstone on the top of it which is actually the decanter lid from the hot air balloon die set so this was the die set it's the showcase 25 and this one is 32 so it was about 
just over six months ago, maybe a little bit more. Um, and they did also bring this out recently on Creating Craft as well, so you could have also got it from there rather than it being a showcase. Um, but yeah, I just thought it would go really nicely, and I feel like this is a lovely little platform on the top. I added this extra platform, this is actually the piece that creates the top and bottom here, but I added an extra one onto there to be like a plinth to put the gem on, um, but I feel like you could put so many different things on top of there. If you had um, maybe one of those like make your own snow globe kind of things, you could put a snow globe on the top of here that could actually be a three-dimensional working snow globe on the top of this, and this could be some kind of like um, countdown to Christmas or countdown to a um a wintry holiday or you know something like that or you could um make it into maybe like having a ballerina on the top of it and it could be some kind of um jewelry box for a little girl and it could have a ballerina on the top of it or you could go and combine it with some other tonic die sets um like i was saying in the tutorial video the post box was also hexagonal and i was also thinking about um the lanterns that came out a little while ago they had um a hexagonal sort of shape to them and they had like domed elements you could put a dome element on here whether it's the smaller one or the larger one um there's all sorts of different like top lid pieces from different die sets as well that might look cool as like a fancy finial on the top of this box too so i really think you can go to town with changing this by putting something different on the top of it as well so but this is the one that i created um as i said i'm not going to do a construction video but i can show you which dies create what pieces if you want to know so the little drawers here is this piece here and this piece so this little piece creates this tiny little cube which you're supposed to put one of these decorative pieces onto so that it acts as like um, a decorative handle but you've got enough space to kind of grip onto it rather than it being stuck to the box. Um, but I just really like the cube. I think it looks really cool um, and it goes with that kind of like computer gamey kind of feel to it. But that is the little die that creates that little cube and then this is the die that creates the little drawer. So if you've ever wanted a little drawer for something you've also got the little drawer die in here which is really handy um, and you need to cut two of them to create one of the little drawers. Then, um, which is the next bit? I suppose this whole bottom section here, so this die, if I get a magnet, this die here plus this die here creates this bottom section for you. So you need two of these and two of these and you use them to, this is the, the double side that goes round here and then that is the bottom and then you need another one on the top of that section as well to create this kind of like cavity inside there that those two rectangular boxes can fit inside of. There is also a barrier between them so your boxes aren't going to go shooting through from one side to the other and the piece that you use for the barrier is this piece here and it gives you these little marks to cut off um, these side pieces so you can put it inside although this was the piece that confused me in the instructions because it tells you to cut off this side but then in the diagrams it shows that you stuck this down with a glue tab but it's told you to cut the glue tab off so I'm not 100% sure how like if that bit of the instruction is correct but it does still work if you cut that piece off and you just use these two glue tabs to stick it either side of the hexagon it does still work like that because that's how I built mine but the instructions are a little bit confusing just on that step though but that is that piece um, so that's how you create that bottom section then this like little plinthy piece here and that you need two of inside here as well is this die so this might be a useful die um, to use on cards as well. This could be like a three-dimensional little piece that you add onto a card. Instead of using foam tape to make something like pop up 3D, you could use this die to have a three-dimensional hexagonal piece on your card. And then you also combine this one with this die. I think it's this one. Yes, which is the slightly smaller of the two hexagons. You see this one, the cut line is in the middle of the metal. The other one, which is the slightly larger one, the cut line is right on the edge of the metal. So the one that works with this piece is the one that has the cut line in the middle of the metal. But that creates that little plinth piece, um, but you also need that for creating the drawers, um, or the top and bottom of the drawer section in the centre. Then the... Hexagonal drawers, if you want to create one of these little drawers here, you need three of these and one of the larger hexagon. So this is the larger piece that has the cutting line right up against it. I think that's the right one, unless it's also the smaller one. 
No, I think it is the smaller one. Okay, so I think it's three of these and the smaller one. It does tell you in the instructions, but I think maybe it's three of these and the smaller one. Yes, it is, because that's the right length for that piece. So three of the side pieces and one of the smaller hexagon is for the drawers. And the little handle that I've used on the drawers is this little piece here. However, I've used it in a different way. I could have just made those little cubes again, but because I was following the instructions, I cut out three of these to use them. So I've just put mine together like this, but the way it's designed is that this piece would be here. And these two smaller little... Um, glue tabs actually stick either side of the sloping piece so that the cube sticks out like a cube but it's actually stuck on the two sloping sides of the hexagon but I thought it looked quite nice because I was going for that um, like computer gamey kind of feel um, to have them staggered like this I thought that looked quite nice so I did them like that and left them as those cubes but I could have also used the cube die to do those handles as well but I was sort of following what the instructions told me to cut out so I had those pieces left um, then the main outside of this you actually use this side piece so you've got this big side piece and you use this gorgeous hexagon with that debossing detail in it so you use those two to create the main outside piece and then for the inside piece you go back to this one that has the little nick marks for you to be able to cut it off and you do use four of them to create the outside section and this is the one that you use the larger hexagon on so you need the slightly larger hexagon where the cut line is right on the outside edge of the hexagon die. So I think that is all of the pieces that you actually need to create the um, perfect pergola. But if you have a look up close at this, you'll see all of those beautiful decorative designs that are in here. You've got four different hexagons that you can use to line the inside of your drawers, to add on to the top of the box, or just create cards with. I think they're fantastic for your card making. So this one has got less cutout detail, but a few little bits of debossing detail in there. This one is really intricate. I really like this one. I cut this in navy blue on the cards that I'll show you later. You've got this one which has a really beautiful flower design in the centre and again some debossing details in there too. And then you also have this one which has that same flower design but has more intricate fretwork cut out of it. And this one you can actually layer on top of this one to get different looks as well. And I do show you that in the tutorial video. But you can layer up some of these hexagons to give different designs as well. And all of the hexagons will fit in both the smaller and the larger hexagon. So depending on what kind of... Um, extra edge you want around the edge of your patterned hexagons you can use the slightly smaller one or the slightly larger one and they both cut them out then um, panel wise you have the actual panel to be able to cut um, into the outside portion of your pergola and you've also got the beautiful decorative pattern which has got this gorgeous like uh, crisscross almost like wicker kind of side pieces with beautiful symmetrical patterns above and below and then you've got similar kind of design on the smaller version except the smaller one has a pierced uh, rectangle to cut around it and there's also more debossing details in the actual pretty die that goes in there as well you've got lots of little panels so you've got these little panels that decorate the hexagon drawers You've got these little panels that decorate the outside of the bottom base and then you've got this little panel that's supposed to decorate the drawer front but these three can be interchangeable, um, the bottom of the base and the drawer front here but these two are the ones that are to go on the hexagon drawer so you've got a pierced design or a straight edge and then you've got this kind of wicker or um, woven crisscrossy background kind of design and then also this flower kind of element with hearts in there then you've got a similar um, design just like bigger versions in those two and then you've got this one with a little bit of that debossing detail that really matches this one as well and this rectangle here has the extra deboss line around the edge of it as well which I use in my tutorial video I actually use the deboss line outside with this pattern on the inside then the final pieces that are in here that I haven't shown you yet are these beautiful decorative pieces which I think are mostly designed to be the gift tag and to also add a decorative detail onto those little cubes um, that would be your handles on your little drawers down here. So you've got this little one here which is kind of like a puffy cross kind of shape and you've got the stitched one on the outside and then a straight edged one on the inside. You've got this one here which is kind of... Um, 
almost like a, a figure of eight kind of shape but with points on the top and bottom with a little decorative detail to go in there and you've also got this little gift tag one with a couple of layers so you can layer that up as much as you want to and it kind of looks like a cherry blossom sort of flower I think. So those are all of the dies in the die set. I'll move these out of the way and then I'll show you the samples that I've got to share with you as well. So these are a few of the leftover hexagons from my tutorial video, but I was showing how they can layer up on top of each other. You can see you've got this beautiful intricate design, a slightly more solid one and then a sort of middle version of intricacy. And these actually will layer up on top of each other. These two are almost the same design, but you can see there are actually filled in pieces from the sea foam or the sea salt green behind some of these areas. So if you did that in two really contrasting colours, it would stand out really nicely, filling in a little bit of that detail for you. But this one also looks really nice laid on top um, and gives a really lovely detailed fretwork. And then some more of the pattern is showing through there as well. If I take a piece of this glitter card here I don't know if that gives a clearer kind of view that you can still see all the way through the hexagons as well so you could get four layers of colour within one of these sort of designs which I think is really lovely so that's just those hexagons I wanted to show you these cards I haven't quite finished yet but I'm thinking when I do finish them I'm either going to just do a little stamped sentiment out of this Simply Sentiment stamp set or I'm going to use the three large word dies from these three sets which are the foliage frames inspiring sentiments and there's a hexagon, a circle and a diamond and one says chase your dreams, make today the greatest day and the world needs more people like you. I thought they might be nice um, sentiments to go on here because these are quite busy kind of background so I thought cutting this from white maybe stacking up two or three of them and then maybe using a vellum bubble if it needs it behind them to stand off these backgrounds I think it would look really lovely so these are the three that I have done in the tutorial video and they are using the different die cuts to create different patterns but sticking them directly onto double sided adhesive whether that is the craft perfect A4 sheets of adhesive or whether it's the new wide roll of double sided adhesive as well in their tissue tape um, you can then place all of your die cuts on there and then we actually used a mixture of gilding flakes in the silver bullion finish so these beautiful silver bullion gilding flakes from Nouveau we sprinkled on some of those then we also added some silver tinsel glitter and some steel grey glitter as well um, and we got this kind of like mercury glass sort of effect in the background it looks like really aged mirror um, I think it looks really cool so I I was saying in the tutorial, I'm sorry if you watch both of them, I tend to repeat myself a lot, but um, I would normally stick all of these kind of die cuts down and just put like white or clear kind of glitter on top of them, so you got like a really stark contrast, but I really like this mottled, aged kind of effect that we've got by mixing some of these different um, Pure Sheen kind of and Nouveau elements together. I really really like them so that is just one idea but you could definitely do them just with the die cut sticking them down not bothering with any of the messy kind of glitter or gilding flakes you can definitely just stick them down if you want to but I thought it would be um, another nice technique to share in my tutorial videos and then this is what it actually creates. I know I did run through it quickly earlier, but I thought I'd show you in a little bit more detail. You can see how I've alternated the colours that I've put behind these panels on the back. And to get this pattern in here, I just cut it directly into my light blue. I think this is Arctic blue, I think. Um, I just cut the panels directly into that to get that design. And then I cut the rectangles that should have cut the decorative detail out, but into the solid colours and then stuck them on the inside of of this outside of the pergola and I was thinking that I might have to line the inside with like patterned paper or something but you really can't see it you can literally see like the first two panels on each side but you can't see the gaps between them in the background and um, so you don't need to worry about lining the inside if you're using solid stuff on here which is n nice to know um, but yeah that's how or what this little um, perfect pergola kind of looks like. So you've technically got five drawers in here. You've got three that are this gorgeous hexagon shape, 
and then you also have the two that are down here as well that are those little rectangle ones too and I really like this cube that goes on here that, that's supposed to have a decorative piece on there but I really like the cube just as a, um, a little um, doorknob or draw knob as well so and I really think you can add so many different things on the top of this box too and I thought this just finished it off really nicely using the top of that decanter from the hot air balloon die set but I'm sure there are so many more things that you could put onto here to turn it into all sorts of different um, kind of concepts as well actually and I do think this is quite a nice die set for experimenting with and um, adding extra sides onto because there's nothing to say that you have to only add four sides onto this you're only adding four sides so that you can fit this piece in the center of it and so that the drawers will come out but you could add a fifth side and turn this into something completely different so if you had some of the um, kaleidoscope patterned panels they might be a bit too wide for this but I'm sure you could make them work in some kind of way or any of the other like strip dies that we've had or um, the kind of dies I, I think we had some smaller strip dies like this that laid on top of each other unless it was only the larger ones that did that but I'm sure we've had loads of different um, tonic dies that are relatively this kind of size and shape that you could turn into something like this as well or I'm sure you could elongate it too and maybe add five drawers in the centre and elongate the side pieces or you can just make the central piece as well you don't even have to do the outside piece and you can also add more layers of drawers on the bottom too so there's so many ways of altering this one I think this is a really nice one for people who love altering the tonic die sets as well and creating something really unique from them and also mixing and matching with other die sets that you might already have in your stash too so I hope you enjoyed this up close video looking at the perfect pergola hexagon box from tonic which is showcase number 32 and um, don't forget to stay tuned for tomorrow's video which will be the tutorial of how I did these cards as well so hopefully it's a technique that you either haven't seen before or if it will just remind you and spark your memory of um, you know different ideas that you might want to do with it as well so Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in the next video.